Hi and welcome to FNS BUP. Uh, in today's video we're going to look at carrying on from the lashings, pole lashings video that we did, which you'll find in the playlist if you go have a look, um, where we learnt a lot of the basics, some basic knots, clove hitch, uh, some lashing square lash um, for enabling you to sort of build stuff when you're out camping, bushcrafting, all that kind of stuff. Um, these are sort of basics that we find are essential. Now moving on from that, today we're going to be learning a little bit more about lashing and how you can incorporate that into something extremely important in camp that we have used probably 80% of the time when we go camping. So stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to uh, FNS BUP. Um, okay, so a follow on from other videos that we've done, um, more lashing. Um, and in this one, we're going to be making a tripod. The tripod can be used for over a low fire, okay, for hanging a pot over the top of the fire. Um, when we first tried this, um, we did have a couple of issues, but we've kind of worked things out over time, which is again part of the learning curve. All of what we're showing you is basics, and you can then develop from there. Like I say, it's all a learning curve. Before we go on, please, please don't forget when you're watching this video just to hit the thumbs up button for us. We've got about 80% of our subscribe, well, 80% of our viewers now um, that are watching from an outside source, um, not necessarily subscribed. So if you could please subscribe, hit the like button, that would be fantastic. It would help us grow as a channel. We're at about 82 subscribers and we would love to get up to about 100 before Christmas if we can. Um, so please, anybody that just clicks on this, watches it, likes what we're doing, just hit the thumbs up button, click subscribe, and then you'll then get more videos like this. Now unfortunately due to the current situation we're all going through, we can't really get out very far and do very much, we're hoping to soon. Um, bad weather today meant that we've had to, you know, come in the shelter in the garden again. Um, but we have got a, like I say, a follow-on video from the lashings, pole lashings video that you'll find in the playlist. It's okay, so, with no further ado, we'll crack on. And I'm behind the camera as always. And Matt's on the camera, again. <laughs> um, mainly because I used to be a scout leader many, many years ago. Um, so I've got a lot of experience in building, knots, lashings, all that kind of stuff. Matt's pretty new to all the sort of knots and lashing sides of things. If whenever we're out, it's usually, usually me that takes over doing the lashings. But he is getting there with it, but he just needs to kind of... Bit, he's a bit rusty, so he just needs to kind of, you know, neaten things up and finesse things up a little bit. But he's getting there. So anyway, Matt's behind camera. Right, okay. Zooming in on what we've got down here. Right, so basically what we've done is we've been out um, you yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, and we went and sort of got some hazel from some local woods that are close by um, and we're talking probably shoulder height and I'm probably what five foot ten so I'd say probably about five foot so shoulder height will do for most average people okay uh, make sure you get three three poles the same length okay they must all be the same length right what we're going to do is we're going to start on the first pole I'm going to start with a, I think on this one I'll probably do a Canadian jam knot just for ease. I could use the clove hitch. Um, I'll just bang a, a Canadian jam knot on here. Doesn't matter how really you start as long as it's a secure start. Okay, so I'm going to go around the pole and make a knot around. Can you see that? How that sort of now runs through the knot that I've created in itself, okay, that's how we start the Canadian jam knot, and then in this one that's part of the knot we've just created, I'm just going to create another knot which is a stop knot, okay, so we do that on there nice and tight, so you've basically got that, can you see that nice and clear, yeah? Right, okay, so from there, you tighten it all down and you just move forward and backwards pulling on that tighter and tighter and tighter and you'll see that that knot will move closer as it gets tighter and jams up and binds on this pole okay that's nice and tight now on there okay so from the first pole jam knot we're going to go down and underneath 
the middle pole and then we're going to go over and under the end pole okay like that I'll try and keep it a little bit loose to start off with so you can see what we've done so from the first one jam knot to tie it off and you go underneath the centre pole over the end pole okay just kind of bring them together a little bit closer it does help if you've got them raised up off the floor it just gives you a bit of hand room to be able to work on your knot then when you've gone over the end pole and you're coming underneath we're going to come back up and over the centre pole so you can see how it starts to kind of figure of eight ish around okay you come back to this side and I just kind of give it a really good nice tight pull just to tighten it all down and again you can trap it with your thumb as you work on the rest of it and that just keeps all what you've tightened tight okay so you've gone over the center pole under this end pole and we're now coming up and over the top now what you can do is you can try just create a little bit of a gap feed it through at the top and just pull that down like that there you go underneath the center pole okay and then over the end pole underneath over the center pole through down and underneath and then we're back to this end pole okay and again give it a good pull on there nice and tight okay now I would say no less than two and probably no more than four of these types of wraps it just gets bulky uses a lot of cordage unnecessary so I usually aim for sort of three three wraps round so I'm just going to do that and then we'll come to tying off on this end just want to watch this there Matt okay so over the top underneath the middle over the top of the end round over the middle back towards myself underneath okay just kind of push it all together keep things neat you get to this end again have a, give it a nice pull on there make sure it's all lovely and tight okay right now to finish off I'm probably going to have to do a clove hitch okay so I'm going to show you the clove hitch again so we'll run through that it's going to create a bit of a gap it doesn't help when I've got that bit of a notch there but we'll manage okay so I've gone over and under and you're going to go back over again and create that cross so I'm going to loop it through and pull that loop back down over itself so we've now got that cross okay now we go underneath the cross we have showcased this before and just pull all that slack back through and then Tighten that down. Sorry. <laughs> Headbutt the camera. And then I'm then going to just do a clove hitch just to secure it. Well, it's a half hitch. It's not a full clove hitch. Pull it back through itself. Oops. So that it then traps, traps on there. Okay. Right. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go down, well, over the top of the first pole, just kind of spread them out a little bit, and I'm going to poke that thread, that cordage, back down through the middle. It gets a bit of a pain when you've got to pull all your length to get like your cordage through, but that's just what you've got to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're now going to concentrate on the gaps in between, and we're going to go down and through, over the top, down and through, and back over the top this is called frapping and we showed this in the square lash nice pull tight on that okay go down and through I'm just kind of trapping the uh, what I've just tightened with my thumb it all gets a bit fiddly and it's all practice 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 makes perfect 
I would say probably two, maybe three round that as well. And that should just be enough just to tighten everything up, pull everything in. And that's basically what the frapping does. It takes up any slack that you've created or left over. So I'm going to come over the top and down through there. Again, just spread your poles out a little bit, give yourself a bit of space. Yeah, just, just fiddly. Just bear with me. There we go. Right. So we've wrapped round and come over the top. And again, just pull that tight. Then we're going to come up to the top of that one. See him come down that gap here. Give it a pull tight, trap it with your thumb, and just push your cordage through. Hence why we leave this gap underneath and have it raised up so you can then put your hand underneath and you can then grab that slack. Pull all that through and bring it up through the top. Pull it down nice and tight. And you will have seen all that squeeze together as I pull that nice and tight. And I trap that with my thumb and go down and through one more time. Slack through. Oh, I've done it again, hit the camera. <laughs> right, so start with the uh, Clovich or a Canadian jam knot. Down, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, back to there. Lock it off. And then you come across, down, and frap round two to three times. Over the top, frap round two to three times. And then you can either just wrap back round and finish off here, or you can finish off there. Now I'm probably just going to finish off there just for ease because I'm there anyway. And again, I'm going to do the clove hitch. Yeah. See that nice and clear, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do a half hitch just to, for extra, extra security. You can never really kind of go wrong. It's just an extra way of just locking it all down and just securing what you've done. Okay, so now all we've got to do is stand the tripod up, which I'm now going to do. Hopefully, Matt can get this on camera. Just separate your legs off. You see that, yeah? Yep. Cool. Okay, so obviously you're left with some slack. Now, there's your tripod to go over your fire, five foot high, I would say, on average from our experience, is enough for any sort of fire to be big enough to say flames that high, yeah, for the most, and then you can still, you know, hang a pot over what would be the fire, okay? And I'm going to now show you also how to create a bit of a, a pot hanger on your excess cordage you've got coming down. So all you do is you would find a branch probably no thicker than your finger, okay? So about the same finger thickness. Can you see that, yeah? Okay, and from there you're going to find a branch. So you've got your main branch going up the middle and a reasonably thick one coming off this way. And you cut below where that Y joint would be, and you cut some of that off. Chop it off at the top, I would say probably what, four or five inches long, and that'll then basically give you that. Now you can see 
but that's perfect for putting a bale arm on. And all we need to now do is, in line with this, is do a stop knot. So a stop notch. Sorry. So I'm going to try and put a straight, flat slot in there. Not all the way through. I would say probably just shy of half. Can you see that, Matt? So for sort of depth into the wood, yeah, you can see how far I've cut in. So just shy of halfway. Yeah, that's good. Brilliant. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a push cut up towards that stop cut. Okay. So I'm going to use my trusty condo bush law. Okay. There's my condo bush law. And you can see which way around I've got the wood. There's the stop knot, the stop cut. I'm now going to do a, a push cut up to that. Using my thumb to push and cut. You can hear it when it hits. Yeah? Like that. Okay. Just give that a bit of clear up. Right, so you're left with that, which is very similar to the temp peg notch, pretty much the same. So it's just a stop cut, which is just a straight cut in, and then push cut back up towards, and it creates what's called a stop cut. And then this is your push cut, and gives you that angle. So we've now got that. So I'm now going to use the cordage, okay, and create a loop in the cordage. Quite easy, just bend it up to puff over itself and just do an overhand knot with the doubled up piece. So you've then got your, your loop. You then poke your stick through that and it should then hang quite happily on there like that. Okay, okay, it's spun around the other way. <laughs> but you kind of have that. And then you can then just cut off your excess, okay, which isn't needed. Um, what I could do is I could use the lantern just to show we have a lantern out here just to represent a pot using the bail arm so we pretend this is the bail arm of a pot and we would then hang that on there just get rid of that excess if you didn't want to cut all your excess off you just loop it all up at the top so you end up with that, so you've still got a nice space underneath and I'll just kind of try and represent that with a pile of wood, yeah, so if we pretend sort of, you know, that that's, if it stays all in a pile, so we can pretend that that's the fire, that's your pot, then you've got the stick, your cordage should be way out of the way then of any hot flames and it shouldn't melt. Now if you find that it does melt, just go and get another stick, like this, with your Y branch, okay, cut that, cut that, but make sure that when you cut this off here, off the main stem, just cut it a bit longer, so it just extends it, then you just hang it from higher up, and then your cordage is then higher up out of the way, okay? or you can just wrap your cordage around the top and raise your pot up as well. I think I could use a uh, chain. Now, if you wanted to replace the cordage part of this with something that doesn't burn, which would then be metal, you can get a lightweight piece of small chain and you can just create a loop at the top with the cordage and then just loop off that down straight to the bail arm. No need to cut one of these if it has a hook on it. But when you're out in, in, the, in the sort of bush, bush crafting, there you go. Some simple tips, some simple hints, some simple tricks, things that work. So you've got your tripod now to hang a pot over a fire. We've cut a pot hanger. And we've covered lashing and frapping and making a tripod. Very, very easy. Using a lot of the knots that we've already covered. So, that's it from me. And that's it from me. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching uh, FNSBUP. Okay. Um, catch us next time in the next video. 
Um, don't forget in the description uh, we will have a link to our Patreon page if you want to have a look at that. Um, failing that, if you don't want to do that, please do us the honour of subscribing to the channel, pressing that like button, um, and also the notification button to get notifications every time we then do a video. You'll get notified. Uh, everyone's a winner. You're learning skills, then you can then, when we get free and we're able to go out, we can then implement these skills that we're learning and a lot of what I'm showing you are basics and can be applied to a myriad of items that you want to build. Tables, chairs, benches, campcraft stuff. It's great. It keeps your interest going. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much guys. We'll see you next time. See you bye next bye. time.